Madness Global Viewing Public. Tim Skank here, coming to you live from the rectory of the Episcopal Parish of St. John the Evangelist in the Easter Shangri-La of Hingham, Massachusetts. I am with Scott Gunn, who is also coming to you live, but from the executive directory of Forward Movement's global headquarters in Cincinnati, Ohio, also a place of great Easter joy. Hello, Scott. Hello, Tim. Two things. Number one, happy Easter. Number two, nice shirt. Thanks. I appreciate that. It's purple. It's got a little pink on the inside there. It's very Eastery. Yeah. It looks uh, disturbingly similar to mine, but I don't have pink. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice, nice shirt. We, yeah, we like to coordinate, as, you, as, as everybody knows, we like to coordinate thing, everything when it comes to Monday Madness, and the shirts are no exception. Yeah. So what a year it was in uh, Lent Madness XIII. It was pretty amazing. We had the closest golden halo voting in the history, the long history of Lent Madness. And um, Jose, Dr. Jose Gregorio Hernandez won the golden halo. And, and then once we shuffled out uh, some, of the, some of the voters that, um, that, well, I guess we can say the word cheating, um, uh, and, and we did our forensic analysis. That's why we delayed announcing the result. And Dr. Jose won literally by three votes. Yeah, no, it's, it's how it works. Um, over at the Lent Dome, the crowd was hushed and the officials on the field uh, waited to, to see you know, how the play uh, shook out. And then the, the officials up in the booth uh, revealed, uh, reviewed the votes and determined that it was uh, th just a three vote margin when we netted out all the uh, various cheaters. Yeah, which is uh, which is pretty amazing. So obviously it was close, and and people were passionate, and and people cared. And of course we we want to get this right for the Lent Madness global viewing public and voting public. Nothing but the best for them. That is correct. So uh, oh, and you know just a kind of a fun fact, throughout this time of of Lent, um, all the matchups, nearly two hundred and twenty thousand votes cast. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, that's impressive. Uh, I didn't realize the Lent Dome was that big, but uh, I guess it's, it's, it's pretty big. amazing. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. So thank you all for voting. Yeah. And it was a good year. Uh, as usual, the, the comments were uh, mostly great. And uh, we had several uh, nail biters and some uh, landslides and all the drama. You'd hope some upsets. Some, uh, it was it was all it was a good year for uh, for Lent Madness. It was a great year. And in order to celebrate Dr. Jose's victory, one of the things that you can do is you, you can purchase not this mug because this is- Wait a second, I have a question. Yep. Yes. Why would I buy an Absalom Jones mug to celebrate the victory of Dr. Jose Hernandez? That is a fantastic question. My guess is you would not. <laughs> um, but they are, uh, these are, they are in production for the 2022 Golden Halo. See, this is an example, Scott. This oh, I not see. Actual mug. Yeah, it just, just to be clear. Um, and it will have Dr. Jose on, on there. Yeah, and just, uh, just a little word. Um, we have ongoing supply chain issues, so we're going to do our best to get that exact same mug, but we're just with a different picture on it, um, a different name and all that. Right. I, I, but, don't have to, I don't have to cross this. I, I, <laughs> no, you can be, yeah, okay. no, exactly. Um, we're hoping to get exactly the same style of mug with just an uh, updated uh, picture and name. But if the supply chain prevents us from doing that, we'll, we'll get something very similar. So if you buy your mug, it's going to look ish about like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, and it's a great way to, to celebrate and toast the Golden Halo winner. Yeah, so, uh, so that's great. And if somebody wanted to order a Lent Madness mug, um, not an Absalom Jones mug because those are rare collector's items now, but if somebody wanted to order a 2022 Golden Halo winner mug, where would they go? Well, the first thing, the first thing they would do is go to www. And it's been it's been a week since I've mentioned this, but it's dot lentmadness.org. I'm I'm nearly 100 percent certain. Yep. And then they go to the Lentorium tab. The Lenten Emporium. Yes, they would. Yeah. Yes. And there they could go down and find the mug and click buy. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that sounds great. And I know people are already looking ahead to Lent Madness XIV. Um, yes. And maybe uh, we should let folks know how they could nominate uh, saints for the next uh, competition. 
Oh, you mean we, we actually accept other people's opinions? And, <laughs> you would. Huh. I had no idea. Uh, that is true. Um, sometime in the, in the next few weeks, at some point, based on the whim of the Supreme Executive Committee, nomination tide will be announced. And that is a week-long period where you, the Lent Madness Global Viewing Public, gets to nominate saints for Lent Madness 2023. Yes. So look for that. And when it is nomination tide, we're going to repeat this a few times, but we're going to just start telling you now the one and the, well, there are two ways you can make nominations. One way and the best way to make nominations is to leave a comment on the post on Lent Madness when we invite your nominations. Not a Facebook comment, not a tweet, not a text message. Leave a comment under the post. That's the, that's probably the best way. Your other yeah. option, if, you, if that doesn't work for you, is you can write your nomination on a $20 bill and mail it to Tim or me. Yeah, we've been saying this for a while. Um, we have yet to get any. <laughs> no, and we, I, we got so, one. We <laughs> didn't. <laughs> we, did, oh, we got um, one, which, wow, by the way, um, for the record, um, I entered as a contribution to Forward Movement. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> Well, we hope that more are forthcoming. Um, and perhaps there's inflation, okay, because we've been doing this for a while. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, it, but in any case, um, so that is definitely a, a way to do that. Um, should people knock on your door at home and hand deliver a nomination form? Is that an acceptable? <laughs> no, it's either the comment or in the mail. It's got to it's gotta have a U.S. Postal Service uh, cancellation on it or it. it won't be official. Okay, so nomination tide is coming. There will be information about that. There'll be a post and, and all yeah. of that. And, and a lot of people wonder, by the way, you know, they know, everyone knows that Easter is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox. And they wonder when is nomination time. Yeah. And the answer to that is um, we have not revealed this, I believe, uh, heretofore. Yeah. But what you do is first you calculate the spring equinox. And then you find out when is the first full moon after the spring equinox. Yeah. Then you figure out when is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox. Mm -hmm. And then it's after that at some period determined by our whim. Right. That is exactly right. There's a purple number involved. <laughs> yes. It's the first whim after the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring so, equinox. So, so just to be clear. <laughs> just to be clear. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, anything else we need to we need to share before we, we wrap things up? Uh, no, I mean, if, if people are looking for a little Easter joy to, you know, bask in uh, after the, the fun of Lent madness and, and the discipline of Lent, I think both of us have written books involving Easter, and we'll have a link to that under this post. And so you and, can buy and, those. And, and Scott's book is brand new. So mine's, mine's kind of old news, but, but I still stand by it. Um, but, uh, but Scott has a brand new book and so excited to read that as well when you send me a free copy. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. And speaking of Easter, happy Lent. Happy Lent.